Hey there, science explorers. Have you ever wondered what makes things move? Why does a ball roll when you kick it? Or why does a swing go back and forth? The answer is force. Force is simply a push or a pull. It's what gets things going, stops them in their tracks, or changes their direction. Forces are everywhere, all around us, even if we can't always see them. Think about it. When you open a door, you're using force to pull it towards you. When you close it again, you're pushing it away. Even something as simple as picking up your pencil involves force. Forces are pretty amazing, right? Let's dive in and learn more about the different types of forces and how they shape our world. We already know that force is a push or a pull. Now let's look at some everyday examples of these forces in action. Remember that door we talked about? Opening it is a pull, using force to bring the door closer to you. Closing it is a push, using force to move the door away from you. See, you're a force expert already. What about playing with a friend on the swings? When you pump your legs, you're using force to push yourself higher and higher. And when you want to slow down, you use force to push against the air. These are just a few examples of how push and pull forces are at work all around us. Can you think of any others? How about when you throw a ball or ride your bike? Forces are everywhere. So far, we've talked about forces that make things move, but what about forces that slow things down? That's where friction comes in. Friction is a force that happens when two surfaces rub together. It always acts in the opposite direction of motion, trying to slow things down or stop them completely. Think about sliding down a slide. You go much faster on a smooth, slippery slide because there's less friction, but on a rough slide, you go slower because there's more friction. Friction is important because it helps us control movement. It allows our shoes to grip the ground so we don't slip and slide everywhere. It's also what allows car brakes to work, slowing the car down safely. Friction might seem like a pain when it slows us down, but it's actually a super important force in our world. Now that we know a bit about forces, let's talk about the rules that govern how they work. These rules are called Newton's Laws of Motion, named after a very clever scientist named Sir Isaac Newton. There are three laws in total, and they explain how objects move when forces act upon them. Don't worry, these laws might sound complicated, but they're actually pretty easy to understand. Ready to become a force and motion expert? Let's learn about each law and see how they apply to the world around us. Newton's first law of motion is all about inertia. This law is fundamental in understanding how objects behave when forces are applied to them. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist changes in its motion. It's a property that all objects have, whether they are moving or not. Basically, it means that an object at rest wants to stay at rest, and an object in motion wants to stay in motion at the same speed and in the same direction. This is why a ball on the floor doesn't move unless you push it. Think about a soccer ball sitting on the ground. It remains still because no force is acting on it. It's not going to move until a force acts on it, like a kick from your foot. That kick provides the force needed to overcome the ball's inertia. Once the ball is in motion, it wants to keep moving in a straight line. This is inertia in action, keeping the ball moving until another force acts on it. But eventually, it will slow down and stop because of friction from the ground and air resistance. These forces work against the ball's motion, gradually bringing it to a halt. Inertia is why we wear seatbelts in cars. When a car is moving, everything inside it, including our bodies, is also moving. If the car suddenly stops, our bodies want to keep moving forward because of inertia. This can be dangerous if we are not restrained. The seatbelt provides a force to stop us from moving and keeps us safe. It acts against our body's inertia, preventing us from being thrown forward in the event of a sudden stop. Newton's second law of motion tells us that the bigger the force, the bigger the change in motion. It also says that heavier objects require more force to move than lighter objects. Imagine pushing a shopping cart. If the cart is empty, it's easy to push and make it go fast. But if the cart is full of groceries, it's much harder to push and takes more force to get it moving at the same speed. This law also explains why a bowling ball rolls slower than a tennis ball if you throw them with the same force. The heavier bowling ball needs more force to move at the same speed as the lighter tennis ball. 
Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that forces always come in pairs. Think about jumping on a trampoline. When you jump down on the trampoline, action. The trampoline pushes back up on you with an equal force, reaction, sending you back up in the air. Another example is swimming. When you push water backwards with your arms and legs, action, the water pushes back on you with an equal force, reaction, propelling you forward through the water. Pretty cool, right? Forces are always interacting with each other in this push and pull dance. Section 9, Simple Machines Making Work Easier. Today, we will explore how these ingenious tools help us in our daily lives. Have you ever tried to lift something heavy like a big rock or a piece of furniture? It can be quite a challenge and requires a lot of effort. It takes a lot of force. You can feel your muscles straining and your energy draining quickly. Luckily, we have simple machines to help us out. These tools have been used for centuries to make tasks easier and more efficient. Simple machines are tools that make work easier by changing the direction or magnitude of a force. They allow us to accomplish tasks with less effort. There are six types of simple machines, the lever, pulley, wheel and axle, inclined plane, wedge and screw. Each has a unique way of reducing the effort needed to perform work. Lever. A lever is a rigid object that pivots on a fixed point called a fulcrum. By applying force on one end, you can lift or move objects on the other end with ease. Seesaws and crowbars are examples of levers. They demonstrate how a small force applied at one end can lift a heavier load at the other end. Pulley. A pulley uses a wheel and a rope to change the direction of force. This allows you to lift heavy objects by pulling down on the rope instead of lifting up. You can use a pulley to lift a heavy object by pulling down on the rope instead of lifting up. This makes it much easier to hoist heavy loads to higher places. Wheel and Axle. A wheel and axle consists of a wheel attached to a smaller axle. This combination reduces friction and makes it easier to move objects over distances. Cars, bicycles, and doorknobs all use wheels and axles. They allow us to move smoothly and efficiently from one place to another. Inclined plane. An inclined plane is a flat surface that is slanted. It allows you to move heavy objects up to a higher level with less effort. Ramps and slides are examples of inclined planes. They make it easier to move heavy objects up to a higher level by spreading the effort over a longer distance. They make it easier to move heavy objects up to a higher level. This is especially useful in everyday tasks like moving furniture or loading goods. Wedge. A wedge is a triangular shaped tool that is used to split or separate objects. By applying force to the wide end, the narrow end can cut through materials. Knives and axes are examples of wedges. They allow us to cut chop and split materials with precision and ease. 
Screw a screw is an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. This design allows it to hold objects together securely. Screws are used to hold objects together. They are essential in construction, furniture assembly, and many other applications. Simple machines make our lives so much easier by allowing us to do work with less force. They are all around us, making everyday tasks more manageable and efficient. Section 10, Force and Motion. Why should we care? Learning about force and motion might seem like just another subject in school, but it's actually super important for understanding how the world around us works. Forces are involved in almost everything we do, from walking and talking to playing sports and building structures. Understanding how forces work helps us design safer cars, build sturdier bridges, and even send rockets into space. Plus, learning about force and motion is just plain fun. It helps us appreciate the amazing ways that the universe operates, from the smallest atom to the largest galaxy. Section 11, keep exploring. The world of force and motion awaits. Congratulations, science explorers. You've learned about forces, motion, and even a little bit about gravity, but this is just the beginning. There's a whole world of force and motion out there waiting to be discovered. So keep asking questions, keep experimenting, and keep exploring. Share what you've learned with your friends and family. Maybe you can teach them a thing or two about the fascinating forces that shape our world.